one of <laughs> a bottle of. <laughs> Where the hell is the fucking Hall of Fame? Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. How dare you say such things about a widow? Did she eat the corpse? Right! Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Open up your head and let it flow into me. I can see inside you the sickness is rising. I think he's some kind of darky. It seems that all that was good has died. Hey, let me up my coattail! Oh no. The world is a scary place. Quiet down on the Christmas show, for fuck's sake! Now that you've woken up the demon in me. Whose idea was this? <laughs> oh, Why? Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Hello? Mother, get up, come on, get down with the sickness. You sit on my face. Fucker, get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Go, get get it. Open up. I just want to preface this show. I just want to start a little bit by getting a little bit off my chest. I had a very bad day, which led to this pay-per-view, believe it or not. First off, Vinny, of course, didn't bother checking his phone or reading his messages, so showed up an hour early when I had errands to run. And then, of course, Sean showed up an hour early because it was Vince's responsibility to alert Sean as to when he should arrive. So that started off things to a great note. So anyway, we... we uh sat down and watched the old pay-per-view, and of course, what happens for the fourth straight pay-per-view? Four, everybody. We could not order it, because Comcast alerted me that we didn't have enough credits. At some point in the last month, Comcast has began instituting credits or something of that nature. We've talked about this before. I don't know what, I don't know what these are. They've, they've got a $150 spending limit on pay-per-views. You can only spend $150 on Comcast pay-per-view. It's like if I instituted a $5 spending cap on figure four merchandise. You can't buy any more. The limit is $5. Anything above that, you need to personally contact me so that I can raise your spending limit for the website. Who the fuck puts a spending limit on how much you can spend on products? So $150 ain't enough. So the first time this happened, I said, listen, this is my job. Please increase this. Increase it to infinity. And the girl goes, no, we can increase it to $750. I said, great. I'm not going to buy $750 worth of pay-per-view. So then, of course, we went to watch the UFC pay-per-view, and Tony had the credit limit, which caused him to spend an hour on the phone handling the deal and then the next day for Pride, same goddamn thing happened. So we missed the first 20 minutes of Pride. For missed the first 20 minutes of both shows. So here it is, the fourth straight pay-per-view. Try to order, and they don't tell you when you attempt to order. You attempt to order, and everything is fine. They decide to alert you with two fucking minutes left before the show comes on the air. All of a sudden, it just comes up. You don't have enough credits to purchase this show. So I called this fucking Comcast, and what do they tell me? The person actually says, we have a record here that you called and asked for your credits to be increased to 750 They were increased to 750 And then the next day, somebody moved them back down to 200 I said, well, why the fuck did they do that? And they said, well, uh, a bear, uh, 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 you know, uh, I don't know. Call billing tomorrow. So they increased it to 250 so they could order this goddamn pay-per-view. And now tomorrow I've got to call again and ask permission to spend more money on Comcast. This is bullshit. So that filled me with rage. And then just once once that happens, just life in general just pisses you off. Yeah. Life in general just pisses you off. 
And I'm not going to... This this is directed at everyone, not one person in particular. I know my my uh, my buddy Craig. I think he wanted a hug at the end of the night, and he didn't get one from me. But I made you give him a hug. And Craig's gonna listen to this and think that this is directed at him, but it's not. This is actually directed at Brent, who is going to return someday. But it applies to everybody, particularly on days when I've had a bad day. Brent comes over here, and by the way, his trial's Tuesday, which I will be attending. Brent comes over here and he's like, oh, it's social night. Let's all tell jokes and, and fuck around and, and do headstands and talk about pork and read the Torah and whatever the fuck else Brent wants to do. Let's watch a movie. He always brings a fucking stupid movie over here. Okay, I got a job that I have to do. And I don't want to come on here and complain about the job, except when Comcast doesn't let me order pay-per-views, but I've got to write a report. I've got to watch the pay-per-view. I've got to pay attention to the pay-per-view so that when I do a pay-per-view report, I don't have 8 million people on the board going, Brian, are you telling me you didn't hear Jim Ross make this one comment on a 2-hour and 45-minute episode of a pay-per-view? I've got to update the website. I've got to check the emails. I've got to check private messages on the board. I've got to do all this stuff. I'm not here during this 3 hours to fucking play wacky games and do whatever else. And if... Anybody, and I've told Brent this before, if you want to go out to a bar on a Friday night and we'll just all get drunk and laugh, great, great. But when it's t- it's that three-hour window of pay-per-views, I've actually got to work. That goes for everybody. Everybody. <laughs> and speaking of... Fucking around. Fucking around and people with mental disabilities. Mental disorders and... We watched one shitty pay-per-view tonight. It sucked. The, it sucked a dick. The TNA pay-per-view. And I would like to start out here. Let's call Brent back. I don't want to talk about the show. I would like to start out with a message to Comcast. I'm not going to swear. I'm just going to give a little bit of helpful advice, like the helpful advice that we heard from Brent Kremen. And that advice is to the friendly folks at Comcast, get a clue. You people are so dumb. I just talked to a guy that has been locked up in a mental facility for three weeks, and he has got more of a clue than anyone I've talked to at Comcast thus far. Everybody knows the issues with credits. I tried to order a pay-per-view a couple of weeks ago, and I was told I didn't have sufficient credits. I called, and they told me my credit limit was at, like, 150. And I asked them to boost it up as high as it can go, because this is my job. They boosted it up to 750. So I went to order another pay-per-view, and I did not have enough credits. I called back. They told me it had been boosted to 750, but then somebody lowered it back down to 200. That ain't enough, I said. So they boosted it up to 250 and told me to call billing on Monday. So I called billing this past Monday, and I addressed the situation, and the woman explained to me that there was nothing that could be done. Really? 250 was as high as it could go. The only solution, she said, is that I needed to pay my bill in advance. Mm. I said, listen, I don't even write a check every month. This automatically comes out of my credit card account. <laughs> you you, manual, you, you bill me. It's electronic withdrawal from my, my credit card account. You bill me every month without fail. I've had this cable as long as I've lived in this house, and I had this cable for years at my old house. Right. All right? Clearly, I'm not skipping out on my bill. Let's raise it up. She goes, nope, you have to manually pay it. So I fucking went out of my way to manually pay the bill on top of what I normally have to do. And today, at about 4.30 p.m., I called Comcast. I said, listen, here's my problem. I explained the situation. I said, I paid my bill in advance on Friday. How many credits do I have? Will I be able to order the TNA pay-per-view? She said, it appears you've got 80 pay-per-view credits. Your limit is 250. You have plenty to buy the pay-per-view today. I said, great. And I ordered the goddamn pay-per-view, and no shit, at 4.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the little thing came up saying, you don't have sufficient credits to order this pay-per-view. I am stunned that you have not put your fist to the television set. I called them, and... I should note that Wrestling Observer Live begins at about 5.05. I <laughs> didn't give a fuck. I was ready to start ranting and screaming, which would have been on the air because I had this on speakerphone with Observer Live while I was calling Comcast. Nice. And amazingly, or not amazingly, call went right through. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, that's awesome. This ain't WWE where no. I had, this isn't WWE where I had to wait 25 minutes on the line. This wasn't UFC where I had to wait 25 minutes on the line. This was Comcast TNA pay per view. I went right on through. No one bought this pay per view, kids. Right. It should come as a surprise to none of you. So, yep, I went on through. They got the pay per view on. I missed about three minutes of it, but it looks like. Unless I get a dish, which may be in the very, very near future, if I don't have a fucking tree in the way like I did last time, I will have to be manually calling and sitting on hold and ordering pay-per-views until the end of time. That fucking sucks. Could they possibly... It's 2007. I will never forget the Far Side comic. There's a little child in the store, and there's a shelf that's about 30 feet in the air that's got flour on it or something. And on the door, it just reads, Inconvenient Store. <laughs> and I thought... That's what Comcast is. The most inconvenient in the fucking year of our Lord, 2007. I can't order a pay-per-view. I've got to manually dial in to uh, Darcy or whatever. Uh, can I get 209 and uh, fucking order that way you have to on do my all rotary this, dial phone? To go through all this bullshit for the honor to pay money for their product. Yes. yes. These people can suck me. I said I wasn't going to swear I changed my mind. They can just fuck off. This okay, there you is are. beyond absurd. <laughs> Nails, I know that, that you're you're filled with anger. I want you to, if you would like, tell the story of Comcast. Well, uh, well, where should I start? The beginning? Yeah, sure. Go for it. We got some <laughs> Okay, so about a month ago, my Internet didn't work for like four days. And doing the work that I do, I do networking, I know what the problem was. And so I was telling them over and over again, and they would ignore me. That's bullshit. And so they'd come by, and they'd replace the modem or do some other stupid shit. This was at your um, work or at your house? At my house. Okay. Um, so, yeah, eventually, three, four days later, the, the, the people finally fixed the routing, which is what I told them they needed to fix. But uh, anyway, so that goes on. Of course, we've been dealing with all this um, running out of credits thing. And credits bullshit, yeah. Um, at least four or five times now. But, uh, yeah, so the most recent thing was um, I went down Saturday and got my uh, two HDMI DVR boxes. An HDMI DVR box, yes. Yep, so I plugged them both in, and I uh, and uh, the, the first one downstairs uh, shut itself off after 20 minutes over Lovely. and over and over again. So that had to be replaced. Yes, and then uh, upstairs, so they updated the firmware on one of these stupid things. Which made it so I get this, uh, it, it's only a green screen. Lovely. And so this was in the middle of trying to watch, uh, Fight Night last night. Oops. So yeah. did you end up getting able to see the show? Yes. I had to watch it through the old, um, non HD connection, but yes, I did. I am now on good terms with Comcast. Oh, we'll see about that. What happened was, it turns out we've got a subscriber whose wife works at Comcast. Yes, and actually I used that information to get mine fixed as well. Really? Yes. This this lovely woman called up and appears, at least we'll find out soon, but she appears to have solved the problem of the credits. I'm very happy about that. And I also shot a commercial the other day for, of all places, That's right. Comcast. That's right. This was a story I was talking about a, a couple of days ago. I swear to God, the day after the giant rant about Comcast, the biggest rant that I'd ever done a couple of weeks ago, I get an email, and they were looking for dudes in shape that wanted to play divers in a commercial. And so I sent in my resume and everything, and they, they called back, and they said, you got the job, it's 150 bucks or whatever. I was all excited. And then at the bottom of the email, it says... Comcast. Dun, dun, dun. It was a commercial for Comcast. It had to be one giant joke. I thought it was one giant joke, and Vinny will <laughs> appreciate this part. Then you're going to get there, and they're going to put a hood over your head, and well, we've never seen you again. Here's the other part. You won't <laughs> understand this, but Vinny and everybody listening will understand this part of the comedy. So I go to do this commercial for Comcast, and guess what the whole point of the commercial is? It's for this plumbing company, and... The, I guess the whole deal is, their slogan or whatever is, you can wear the uniform, that doesn't mean you can do the job. I see. So, I'm a diver, and that would mean that the other diver would be someone who may wear the outfit, but is not suited for the job. It was, in fact, a fat, hairy, oily man in the <laughs> other Speedo. In a Speedo. I swear to God. And Righteous. I thought... This is proof of God. 
About 15 minutes ago on this show, we determined that there was no God after watching the ECW deal with Test. I have now determined that God does, in fact, exist, and he has a sense of humor. So He's kind of twisted. Hopefully all the Comcast issues are settled right now. I want to thank the uh, the lovely woman that helped us out. And, uh, unfortunately, I've forgotten her name. I greatly apologize. We do love you, though. We do love you. I'll, I'll try and find it here among my 8 Sue? million emails. But, uh, Jill? Yes. Hopefully, hopefully that'll all be settled, and I, I very much appreciate that. <laughs> then we had Cena and Umaga for the WWE title. And at the end of the match, you had Umaga going for the ass spot in the corner, and Cena kicked him in the face. And then schoolboyed him for the clean pin. Umaga, of course, hopped right back up. So he beat the monster, but he didn't beat him decisively. He escaped the monster. We, yes, he, we, we didn't get a fuck finish. The monster was not vanquished, no. no. The monster was not slain. The monster was, was outsmarted for three seconds. Because really, he's a savage. He was out-wrestled. Who gives a fuck if his shoulders are down for three seconds? He wants to eat you. Exactly. This man was not defeated, so there's more to come here. This 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 feud can continue. This fe- and, and we're cool with that. Umaga was not hurt by this loss. Uh, Nut Bunnies, in particular, was irate at the finish of the main event. Let me read Nut Bunny's email here that he sent. What the fuck was that? How can they fucking book a feud that good and then just end it in that fucking manner? I've had to watch this goddamn fat fuck squash people for almost a year for it to end with a fucking inside cradle. It's actually schoolboy Nut Bunnies. Oh, and I love how the trend of Cena's matches having the same fucking formula continues. You know, the one where he's beating the shit out of 99% of the match, then, oh, here comes his five moves of doom, and it's over. Fuck this shit. That's from the Nut Bunnies. Yeah, because people like Ric Flair and, and Hulk Hogan and, and many, many others have not had the same match every night. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that for a criticism. but That's, that's totally invalid in every way. Yeah, if people want to get upset about this this finish. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to yell at anybody for getting upset because we had people upset about Angle and Joe. Which, if that upsets you, I don't know what to tell. And actually, Nut Bunnies was actually very upset with that one as well. So I'm not sure what he's looking for exactly. <laughs> we watched CM Punk and Bob Holly in ECW, which is the perfect time to just launch into a rant. Listen, all of you particularly those of you on the board in the CM Punk thread. Here's the deal. I've been hearing all this. There was there was a big thread of, of the, the people that love CM Punk and feel he was wronged versus the people that don't see anything in CM Punk and just don't get it why these people are angry. Here's the way things work. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. CM Punk is an Internet darling, as they say. And thus, there will always be these feuds. The Internet folk are very, very vocal. They get very, very angry. They get very passionate. So they will passionately defend this man. Similar, actually, to the RVD love that we saw for many, many years before, I guess in the end, everybody found out he actually did suck. Right. Now, even with RVD, even with RVD, There were a lot of people that that were very angry, the glass ceiling, Triple H, him being held back, this, that, and the other thing. In the end, he won the title. And he won the ECW title. For a while, he was champion of two brands. In the end, he did make it. And then he fucked it up. Yes. But the point is, he made it. Now, I always hear this stuff about CM Punk has it. And, of course, nobody can explain what it is. It's just he has it. And people will go, The Rock had it, Shawn Michaels, Steve Austin, they all had it. Hmm. And CM Punk has it. And here's the reality. I personally have been watching WWE for 20 years, and I've been following it very closely for 11. And if you ask me, Punk doesn't have it like those other guys do. Certainly not like the names you mentioned. Now, before everybody gets angry, that's just my opinion. Let's say he does have it, and I'm wrong. All right? If he does have it, you'll notice that all the names thrown out, Rock, Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, whatever other names, those folks all made it. Nobody ever goes, Punk has it like Val Venus. Punk sure has it like that Bob Hawley. Nobody ever says that. They always compare Punk to 
the giant superstars, the guys that really did have it, that unquestionably had it, because they made millions of dollars, main event it, and were humongous stars, okay? If Punk has it, he'll make it someday. And if not, he won't. That's it. That is it. RVD doesn't have it either. But he did have something. He had something special that connected to a lot of fans. And in the end, he got his due and then fucked it up. So if Punk does have that, in the end, he's going to get what he has coming to him. And you can all just shut the fuck up when he does a job for Bob Hawley. It doesn't matter. That's the key right there is the, is the it last three words. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is just how the company works. Guys have been raped in this co- this company for however many years it's been in business now. 43 years or whatever. Raped, 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 raped. You over s- and over again forever. You can start with, of all people, Hunter. Hunter got raped. Hunter did jobs and hog pen matches for a year. Yep, because he fucked up. Yeah. But in the end, he made it. And sure, part of it obviously had to do with the boss's daughter and all sorts of other stuff. But he he did it. He got it. He made it there. Ric Flair's son, Ric Flair's fucking son, couldn't make it because he was a geek. If Hunter had been a total geek, wouldn't have made it. Right. And if he'd been a total geek, he wouldn't have married Steph. I can tell you that right now. So that's the story with with CM Punk. I I think that Punk is good. If you ask me, and and people can get very angry and write ten page long threads on this. I don't give a fuck. But if you ask me, Punk will ultimately achieve the level of Chris Jericho. And probably not a whole lot higher. That is my belief. That's pretty optimistic, actually. Jericho did fine for himself. Jericho did very, very good for himself. But he was never The Rock. He no. was never Steve Austin. He was never Kurt Angle. He was never Shawn Michaels. He was never Triple H. He was Chris Jericho. He was a re- regular pay-per-view main eventer. He was. He was. I don't know if I think CM Punk will ever do that. He was a main eventer who was given the titles so that Hunter could win them from him. He, he was a storyline champion. He was a he was a ch- storyline champion. That's all. That's that's what he ultimately was. And I love Chris Jericho. Oh, I yeah. have nothing against Jericho. This is not a negative. This is just what he was. Right. And I don't see CM Punk ever achieving a level higher than that. No, I, 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 I frankly would be surprised if he got that high. I'll be honest. And and I know people are going to go, well, yeah, because people don't like him, blah blah blah. The business, the history of this business is filled with superstars that people hated. Obviously, if if you're well loved and and do the right things, you're going to get a big push. But the talent will largely rise to the top. I mean, there there aren't a whole lot of people in this business that were just fucked and fucked and fucked and fucked and fucked their whole career and never rose above it. Eddie Guerrero rose above it. Chris Benoit rose above it. Those two never. Rey Mysterio, never. This never should have happened. But they all made it. Because they all had it. They all had that special something in the end. We have a special guest tonight, live from the community room, apparently, Brent Kramen. Hello. I can't believe that I caught Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. Oh, well. That's quite an honor. Hi, Brent. How you doing? Well, Hi, Vince. What you been up to? I'm doing much better than when I was in the nut house. We're, we're here to talk to you about that, so let, let's, let's just get that out of the way very quickly. For those of you unaware, Brent has joined us for many a TNA pay-per-view recap. And for about two weeks, he was three. held, three weeks, held against his will in the loony bin. The loony bin, I guess you could say. And Brent? The cuckoo's nest. The, the cuckoo's nest. Take your pick. Now, Brent, I think that everybody, I think largely most people that have heard you on this show were aware that you're a little wacky. You're a little goofy. You can be a little annoying. We've wanted to kick your ass on occasion here or there, but that's what friends do, you know? But we didn't actually think you uh, deserve to be in the loony bin. So why don't you tell a little bit about your experiences in the nut house? Okay. Some of these are funny. Some of these are not. Uh-oh. Um, start with the funny ones. Now let's start with the sad ones first. All okay. Right. Well, one lady was in there because she was, when she was pregnant, uh, she was shot in the face with a sawed-off shotgun. Son of a bitch. Now, naturally, that can have an effect on that's sad. his brain, because their brain is obviously different than it was before, if they live. 
and she lived and as they left the her womb alone so that the baby lived as well um, secondly there was a guy that was my roommate he seemed like a perfectly nice guy we got along well um, I even gave him my email but I did not give him my phone number because one time he went manic because he was diagnosed as bipolar and um, which is the same diagnosis that I was given yet he did things when he was bipolar that I would never ever do such as hijack an airplane he hijacked an airplane he hijacked an airplane with a gun. I would like to cut you off here and hereby apologize for me stating this place was the nut house and the loony bin I apologize I just like to get that out there go ahead um, so I think that then, uh, so those people belonged in there because, sure. because when it was, it was the first one had a brain that was different than it was before. Yeah. And the second one, um, did things when he was manic that are dangerous to himself and other people. Yes. I agree. That was what we had determined. And I went to, I went to the, we'll just call it the institution for now. I went to the, the facility. I went to the facility and and I didn't I didn't meet the woman but I did see your roommate and it became very clear to me early on that that most of these people in fact everybody that I ran into there definitely probably was best served I guess living in the facility you however stuck out like a sore thumb in there as somebody that did not belong now Ultimately, is that what was decided, that perhaps you were there, uh, you were wrongly incarcerated? Well, I'll tell you that story in a minute. The short answer is um, the hospital let me out under certain conditions. I see. Um, Are you wearing a collar? No. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Um, <laughs> let's, let's see. So there were a couple of... Uh, men in there, one of them would walk around singing all the time. One time he was, I, th I swear he had dumped shampoo on the ground, which oh, was wow. blue. It was actually um, conditioner that was blue. And so he walked around singing, everything looks like Christmas. Everything looks like Christmas. He walked around the, the whole facility. Because you can, you can, if you walk around the facility 20 times, it's a mile. So that should give you an idea of how big it is. Okay. Anyway, so when he walked by once, I said no. If, it, if the um, condition was blue, it would look like Christmas. No, if it was red, it would look like Christmas. So it was these type of comments that didn't help me. I see. These smart remarks that I would typically make on the show. I see. Um, now, that guy, while annoying, frustrating, there was, there, was a, um, there, was, there was a woman that worked there as an employee. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of liked her. She was a nice lady. She was funny. Um, you? you know, she was quite a bit older than me. Yeah. So I said, no, not, and I didn't like her in that way. I but, see. but, but she, um, her name is Gloria. And so he would go and sing a hymn about Gloria, which I thought was hysterical. Obviously, it drove Gloria crazy. And so Gloria it wasn't the Doors Gloria, version? Gloria would go and tell him to go back in his room. I see. He would constantly be told to go back in his room. And I felt that this was mistreatment because this was just the guy's strange personality. Sure. And that he was not dangerous to anyone. So you felt... Well, to be fair, Brent, we've had to deal with your strange personality by sitting you out of the room before. Well, that's, the, the point is, so did, did you feel that he should not have been in there? Yes, I felt that he should not have been in there. Okay. Do you think he should have been in there? Well, I never met the guy, so I can't say one way or the other. Well, that was the only thing that, that, I, that you could notice from, from, what, from what you saw of him was that he liked to walk around singing a lot, and he was... Um, one time he walked by a guy that was an employee, and he was obviously hom homosexual. It was clear to everyone. Um, you know, the best you could say is that he was bisexual. And so we asked him, um, he asked the guy, are you homosexual or heterosexual? And the guy's reply is, are you a man or a child? Which I thought was a great reply. I'm so confused right now. I heard enough of that to know that that man is probably better off in there. Well, he just asked a guy that was obviously gay whether he was homosexual or heterosexual, and the guy said back to him, are you a man or a child? If he acts more like a child than he does a man. I don't even want to know what that suggests, but let's just move on to the next It doesn't tale. suggest anything beyond what I said, that the guy acts like a childish. Okay. I'll oh, just... he's childish. I see. Okay. Yeah. I interpreted that in a completely different manner. No, 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 no. You, you, you people are... So, um... Jesus so, so, Christ. I, I, any, anyway, um, those people... And there was another guy that was uh, that was Jewish, and he basically I think that he had two personalities. 
And his second personality was like angry man, but he was not really dangerous. Sure. When he did when he was angry, was he just got angry? Just yelled a lot. Right. Uh oh. <laughs> so, but is that really dangerous? I say not. I, don't I know. agree. That is not in any way dangerous. Those men should be allowed to roam free. Yeah. So all of those people got let go before me. Oh. What? Well, Wait, the singing they guy? Were a shorter the, time than me. The singing guy was the singing released guy who you? dumped the bottle of conditioner on the floor. Yes, he was. He was. Actually, I can't say that he is still there. Okay. So um, uh, the other people were let go before me. Well, that doesn't the, seem the, quite the, right. The guy who hijacked the plane. Yes, yeah. gone before I was. Really? Yes, or at least he was there. He well, was the one who was there a short amount of time that I was. Well, remember that next time. Commit some sort of crime when you're in there for uh, an extended amount of time. They may let you free early. I would laugh, but I was there, so I so, can't. That wouldn't work out. I, I can never commit. A, I can never commit a crime. My my, I my record is clean. I mean, sure, there might be a couple of girls that are late the night, but you know, we, we won't get into that unless you want to. <laughs> so anyway, you were in there. And Boy, it's a good thing this is after he's been released. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your uh, parole officer. Do you have like a parole officer or? or are they no, because I have not committed a crime. My parents had me taken taken away, and the first thing I said was. Um, what have I been charged with? Get me a lawyer, and no, not my father, because my father's a lawyer. He hasn't been practicing, but he's still a lawyer. Sure, and, and you don't want you don't want your lawyer to be the one that locked you up. Right. That seems like a conflict of interest. Yes. All right. So, so you got the lawyer, and what happened? No, I didn't get the lawyer until I was in there. Actually, I was offered the lawyer when I was in there for um, a few hours, and I was in restraints. Jesus. Were you um, in this, street- this is a good story. They said, as long as you don't kick. Then you are not be placed in restraint. So I did not kick. Again, I yelled, "Get me a lawyer." What I'm charged with? Where's my lawyer? Where's my lawyer? And they put me in restraints anyway. Yeah, yelling, Brant, may not have been your best idea. Well, they said as long as you didn't kick, I didn't kick. So I took them at their word. Hey, settle down. Settle he's, down. He's got you there. Man. Well, I, I'm, I'm just being a little bit of um, a little bit of of uh, if you've seen um, Larry David or if you've seen. Um, uh, what's what's his, what's his what's his name? Um, he's in uh, he's in Men in Tights, the uh, the Mel Brooks movie. Richard Lewis, yes, uh, yes, exactly. I'm just being a little bit of Richard Lewis. You were. Richard Lewis yells, but it doesn't mean right. it doesn't mean he's upset. Okay, so so they so they got you in the uh, restraints. Were you put in a straight jacket? No, I was not. Oh. I, had, I made a comment about a straight jacket, and they said we don't use those anymore. Oh, that's so, good. Describe these restraints, then. I'm curious. Handcuffs. Four point restraints. I'm oh, sorry. They tie you to the bed. Oh shit! Oh, that's the that's the spread bad. eagle, right? And so basically, eventually they let two of the restraints go, and at that point I was allowed to speak to. Um, Did they let your hand to, to your to feet the attorney go? for the state? Was it your right hand or your left foot? Both. No, no, it was my right hand and my left hand. Your right hand. Okay. And, so you could do sit ups. Uh, I suppose I could. Okay, I'm just checking. Uh, actually, <laughs> not really, because my hands are down, so it'd be difficult to do sit ups. Okay. Um, so I, at that point, I got to speak to the state's attorney. And I figured, well, this should be easy. I'll just tell them what happened. You know, the jaywalking. Um, the tree. Uh, con- yeah, the, the, now, Brent, uh, you said you never the, committed the, the a crime. Throw, throwing a few things in my room, um, and, which only my parents saw, and, and my mother, I should say. And, and then, then there was the, then there was the the uh, Bible quote, which I misinterpreted. Okay, so those were your three things. For those that... of you that were Jewish, I basically was 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 referring to the Shema. Okay. Of course. Sure. Right. So, so you 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 figured that that once this was explained, you would be free, right? And what happened? They offered me a lawyer, and I was and I should have taken one, and I was and I didn't, and so um, basically they kept me there for seventy two hours. Jesus! And after the seventy two hour period, that's when I met my parents in court, and my counselor testified against me as well. And so I was accused later of being paranoid. Well, who wouldn't be paranoid if you have your parents and counselor testify against you, and the only evidence is, in, is it evidence that they had? Hang on. And so, um, and so what? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Your yes. counselor testified against you. Correct. How, how long have you known this counselor? About nine months. And you've been seeing, is a uh, he or her? It's a he, and I actually brought up, not that that's relevant, but, but well, I, 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 I brought I, up at the very beginning, do you think that there's ever a chance that you will testify against me in court? And he says, I've never done that. Court's not my type of thing. I cannot possibly imagine a circumstance where that would happen. I was when, I, when, I, it is, when I addressed this issue with him, he said, well, there's always a first time. <laughs> I see. Yes, I was going to ask if he had, I didn't want to say he if it was a female, but 
Okay, so so your counselor testified against you in this this hearing. Yes. Hmm. Vin, Vince has found a clue. No, no, I'm just an observation. I see. You know, it was my mother crying on a stand that had me doomed. Because my parents did this because they love me and they care about me. Uh, they didn't do this to hurt me in any way. But but but, but nonetheless, um, I can no longer trust them. Which is very very sad. So so things went poorly in court. Um. Well, my lawyer basically tore apart my counselor's testimony because basically the story is that I was very upset at the time. This I acknowledge that I was upset and I wanted to go to people and I wanted to deal with my problems and I wanted to speak to people to help me. This is what people do when they're upset. And so I called my counselor about 11 at night and shockingly he returned my phone call about 1 in the morning. I was pretty surprised. And so... um we talked for about 40 minutes, recognizing the guy has to go to work the next day and that he needs to sleep. And so at the end of our phone call, he says, Brent, I do need to go to bed. And I say, I totally understand. And um, and he says to me, um, call me if there's an emergency. And I said, what's an emergency? And he says, if you're going to hurt yourself or somebody else. And I said, great, I'll make sure and call you when I have the noose around my neck. Obviously using sarcasm. Because of you, all those of you that know Brent know that he makes some out remarks like that. And those of you that have seen Brent in person know that he's clumsy. He couldn't do that if he was, if he tried. Because, <laughs> because, because I don't own a noose, nor would I own a noose. It's just his, nor would you be it was, able to it was, tie a silly, noose. it was a silly sarcastic remark. Yeah. And my lawyer tore this testimony apart because he said, what did you do when he made this remark? And the guy said, I went back to sleep. So clearly he was not massively concerned. Right. In the future, Brent, you may use better judgment of when you should be sarcastic and when not to. That's true. Okay. But the guy knew me well enough where where he knows my sarcasm and he understood it where he went to sleep. Where he did nothing. He didn't he didn't tell me to go and call the uh he didn't tell me and call the crisis clinic. He didn't tell me to do anything. So your lawyer ripped his testimony apart and you were still committed. Right. My mother cried on the stand, so I was doomed. I see. Did you cry on the stand? I was so worried about my son, and she was. Sure. So you were you were sent to lockup. Correct. And you were. I there. was already in lockup for seventy two hours, and during that trial, I was in two point restraints. Jesus. So you were in locked... a wheelchair. I mean, I was I was like um I was I was, I was like Sabu with it without the without the face mask or Hannibal Lecter. Really? Yeah. Oh, I was I was actually in a wheelchair. I wasn't in one of those gurney things. You oh. never know when you might spring up in the middle of a, a trial. Did you ask them to like, push you down the hall and let you go? <laughs> no. I, I, decided, I didn't say one word during the trial. All I did was wrote, write letters to my lawyer because I figured, you know, bring Brent or uh, being, you know, that could, could actually not help me. And so I was <laughs> well done. silent. <laughs> I'm proud of you, young Mr. Kremen. That was, that was wise. That's proof right there you're not crazy. That is, in fact. Sure. So... You you were locked up and you were you were there for a week and a half or two weeks three weeks you said I was there for uh, two weeks okay and, and I think it was over three no, three weeks because um, there's a 72 hour hold okay and then there's a two weeks all right and so um, and so then after the two weeks you had to choose a judge trial or a jury trial and I was stupid and chose a judge trial fortunately it didn't end up hurting me um, and so if you chose a jury trial then they can hold you an additional two weeks without Without any type of any type of hearing, any type of trial, um, they can do with you whatever they want for two weeks. That if sucks. you choose a judge trial, then you can only do that for one week. However, I felt that a jury would have more would use more common sense, or as a judge who specialized in this type of thing, uh, would go with the would go with with the state unless you heard something really outrageous. Whether my thing would be really outrageous, I didn't know, but I figured I would have a better chance with the jury, and my lawyer agreed. However, he said just go with the judge trial because it'll never go to court. And so after the um, so after the, the the 21 days plus the 72 hours, um, I met with the doctor and with the social worker, and they said to me, "Well, we just we didn't sleep well last night." And I said, "Of course I didn't sleep well last night. I was going to get released. I was excited." <laughs> and so they said, "We just want to hold you another another three days. Uh, you'll be on basically set basically settle with them for another three days." And so I asked a question, what if I walk around singing? And they said, you're not that sick. And I said, let me speak to my lawyer. Because I might not walk around singing, but I certainly might do other things that they would not look favorably upon just because I'm Brent Crum and I'm weird. And so I was not agreeable to basically an indefinite hold. And so um, 
I got my lawyer, and my lawyer got me out under the conditions that um, I don't drink for the next 90 days. And for those of you that know me, know that I'm obviously not an alcoholic, and so this was a ridiculous thing. But I got my lawyer to make an exception for religious observances. Sure. Uh-oh. And so um, I, 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 you know, so I went, I went to, um, I went to Shabbat days. services, which is the Sabbath, which we have every Friday night to Saturday night at sundown. And I and we every Friday, <laughs> every Friday night to Saturday night. Well, yes. isn't that convenient? Yes, it's very convenient. And so believe believe me, I'll be at every I'll be at every Shabbat gathering that I can that I can imagine. But you know, no, I know I'll actually be just one each Friday because I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> and so what they do is they have you do the prayer over the wine, and then you go and you drink one glass of wine. <laughs> you have the option of grape juice, but believe me, I'll be exercising my religious rights, and so I'll be having the wine. Abs- God would agree. Yeah, um, the tradition is wine. Grape juice is. Okay, so what are your other conditions for fuck's sake? Right. And Sorry. so and so then there is also four holidays. <laughs> my my favorite one is Purim, where if those of you that are familiar with the with the Bible, the Book of We're Esther, familiar with porn. the tradition is you're supposed no, it's in the Christian one as well. The but the, 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 the Christian it's Bible. In the, it's, in the, it's in the Hebrew Bible, which Hebrew the Christians Hebrew. call the Old Test, Testament. Okay. And so the, you're supposed How do we to drink. get on this? What the hell are your conditions? We, we got the drinking I'm one. getting to this, but you're supposed to drink till you can't tell the difference between Mordecai and Haman. In other words, you're supposed to get sloshed. And there are three other holidays. I'm converting. To, <laughs> there are three other holidays you're supposed to have four glasses of wine. And Purim is coming up. Okay. And also in February, I'm about to lock you is, up again. Can there we... is the um, Kuba Shvat, which I was, which I, the last time when I was actually giggling on the floor. Just turn him down through the wall. Can he hear us? No. Yeah, he can hear us. Hi, Brett. Well. <laughs> hey, okay, now, what were your other conditions? My other conditions were um, <laughs> that I go to counseling for daily for the next week, and I have no problem with that. Good. And then is the, the same the counselor? Condition, Wait, oh, by the way, the, the counselor that I'll be seeing isn't even a counselor. He's a, he's a social work guy. Okay, so then. Whatever they want me to do, I don't care. I, I mean, I, I think it would make more sense that he was a counselor, but whatever they want me to do is fine. You have to go for a whole week? Yes, every yeah, They day. must have thought you were totally crazy. <laughs> that will solve all your problems. <laughs> Sure. Okay. Um, and, and you know, I, I, as I told them, dealing with my problems will solve my problems. I sure, yeah. Yeah, and so um, depends on how you deal with so them. Then, but uh, the third condition was I'm not allowed to have a, a um, firearm ever. That's probably for the best. Yeah, I have. I think that's a great idea okay, in general. That's fine with me. Were you, were you ever planning on having a firearm? No, I didn't think so. So you're now free, and we're running a little low on time here. So the big question is, Brent, what have you learned anything from this experience? What can you tell others about which, what you experienced? I don't know, because if, if you're Jewish, I would say um, if, you have an, if you have a mother that loves you very, very much and that she tends to get way too involved in your life, maybe you should love her, but don't trust her with certain information. That's a good lesson. Or if you if you have a mother that's overbearing at all, uh, and, and you you just with love, and that she just is is too involved, then you can't trust her, and that's a very sad lesson for me to learn. So sometimes there needs to be a little bit of distance. Yes. And you learned this at thirty. How old? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Okay. Um, you know, when, when I was upset, I would share things with my mother, like you know, like. Uh, you know, you know, like I was concerned about this the storm that we had in Seattle, and I was uh, was a bad I showed my mother when I threw a few chairs in the dustbuster to tell her I was upset. She says, uh, she says, Brent, um, there was a cry for help. I say, of course it was a cry for help. It wasn't a cry to go in the nut house. Do you, do you picture yourself going back anytime soon? No. As long as, She's long in the as, pool. Um, as long as I, I, as long as if I ever go to the hospital, I don't make smart remarks. I don't. I don't sound like Richard Lewis, or Larry David, or or Woody Allen, and um, I behave in a way that is calm. Then I don't see myself going back there. So basically, that's a great idea. You actually. have to put on a facade of normalcy in order to not be deemed insane. Yes, <laughs> I believe that. I believe that if Woody Allen, if Mel Brooks, if um, Robin Williams, yeah, Robin Williams. Um, Jack Black. I yeah, can actually rattle off people, about a hundred names here. All of those people. You know, notice most of them are Jewish. Vince Jack McMahon. Um, you know that 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 if they were like in the state of Wyoming or Montana, they would never let them out if they weren't successful. 
so I've also learned that that um, that that if you are successful in life, I, I consider that having a um, a wife or a girlfriend. I'm out. All right. Sorry. It's a little too heavy here. <laughs> Go on. Um, a job. It's just like you don't have to have all of these things. Sure. Um, or um, you know, I, I can't uh, I can't think of anything else at the, at the moment that immediately comes <laughs> a to car, mind. A car, yeah, you a know, car, no, you know, a credit card. card. I like limit it to a, a job and or significant other. <laughs> you achieve either or both of those things, your success. Ignore Vince for a second, right. Brent. Just and, and go so, on. And so basically, um, basically, if you are if you don't have those things, then they are more they are going to consider you mentally ill if you act at all strange. It is a good point. If if you're a person that does not fit into the mold of what society deems to be acceptable, and you behave in any sort of irrational manner, there's a possibility you could get locked up. Right. And if you're in New York City, they'll let you walk the streets. Sure. But if yes. you're in but if you're in Montana, they'll lock you away forever. If you're in Seattle, it'll probably be somewhere in the middle. Which is what happened then. It's that's largely true. What percentage of people do you think that are in lockdown as we speak are there and should not be? Probably ten percent. Really, that low? Yeah, maybe hmm. twenty, but ten percent. I, I was say. thinking a little bit higher, but ten percent. Okay. Well, Brent, uh, before we go today, we got to wrap this up. We'll have you back on again at some point, but we are 25 minutes into the show here. Sure. Why don't you tell everybody very quickly why you didn't show up here at Club Chico today, because I heard the story and I cackled. Well, I lost Brian's number, because they have his number, his address, and, and I had the bus directions on a separate sheet of paper. His number and address um, were, were on... Um, one, his Rolodex card, which is now gone, and his oh, Jesus. Bus, and the bus directions were on another sheet, both of which were in my back pocket and fell out, and so that meant I couldn't go there. You didn't have my Social Security number or anything on that card, did you? Otherwise, uh, no, right. somebody that, that, I, that I don't have, nor do I have any interest in having. Okay, it's probably for the best. Yeah. I don't want you to have my Social Security number or a gun, either one. I don't have any interest in having either one. All right, well, that's good. Well, Brent, we want to thank you for being on the show today and explaining the situation. Sure. And thank you for having me, and thank you for the time. Yep, we'll probably have it's you... Better, much better than three minutes. That... Only if I have three minutes, I promise I'll be much funnier. Well, you're only going to get three minutes. Oh, I yeah, think you were pretty funny tonight, Brent. All right. Now you did a fine job. So we'll have you back on again uh, at some point down the road, probably the next TNA show, and, and see what's going on. So Great. That'll thank be it. You. Everybody can contact Brent through his MySpace at MySpace backslash the Kremen. Sign up and be his friend, and he posts notes up there as well. So, Brett, we'll talk to you after a little while. Thank you. Bye, dude. All right, see you. Bye. Well, that went slightly longer than I expected. Banned from gun ownership. Yeah. That's impressive. Well, anybody who's been in, in uh, lockdown should probably be banned from gun ownership. I agree. I do have to say this, that I, I would like to apologize for earlier in the show referencing the place as the nut house and the loony bin and such, because as I mentioned when Brent first went in there, when you have a friend who you know is not crazy that is put in a mental institution, it becomes a joke. It becomes funny. They're in the cuckoo's nest. They're in the loony bin. Mm -hmm. It's wacky. Then all of a sudden he starts talking about the pregnant woman who got her face shot and the guy that hijacked the airplane. All of a sudden you're brought back to yeah, Earth. This isn't funny. The other 90%, it's not funny. So thank God Brent's out. He didn't really deserve to be in there. And we have now heard his side of the story. And I largely, I pretty much believe it. The, oh, I, I, yeah. There, there, there are certain. I mean, the strangest thing to me is just the counselor testifying against him. That is, in fact, odd. But you know, when when talking to, and there are a number of people that that hung out with Brent, including Blake Norton, and there are a number of people that have talked to his family, who are the ones that incarcerated him. And my original thought was that there must be more. Brent must have tried to kill himself, or he must have tried to kill somebody. But from the outside sources, from the other sources outside of Brent Kremen, as we say in the reporting business, they all confirmed the same stories. His parents did not have more than Brent told us tonight. What Brent told us tonight is the same story that his parents told other people, which suggests there is no more to the story, which just makes the whole thing even more wacky. But just maybe the wrong Kremen was in fact incarcerated. But, yes, I, I do have to say that, that there is a lesson, if Brent gave one lesson, and, and it applies to everybody listening to this right now, because as wrestling fans, we are out there a bit on the fringe. 
And some of you listening to this right now, perhaps a number of you, are a little bit wacky. We all are in some strange way. I know I am, and Vince obviously is. Fuck and, yeah. And uh, many of you on the board. So, so ten years ago, I would have been a fine candidate for this sort of oh, treatment. Oh, yeah. So as freaks, I guess is the best way to describe all of us, as freaks, sometimes there are moments in this life where we need to act normal. Put on a facade of normalcy. Put on a facade of normalcy. Get comfortable with it. Yes. It's fine to be wacky and out there and goofy, but when the law's involved or mental <laughs> health professionals... Don't fuck around. Don't fuck around. That's the story. That's the lesson for the day. I've been thinking, by the way, once this was sent to me, I know you've retired, so you say, but you are still the YWF champion. <laughs> oh, God. And it would be a disgrace to have the belt stripped. I think in the illustrious history of the YWF title, it has never been stripped of a man. Wow. There is has a, there been stripped of a boy? There is a continuous... <laughs> it is. That's what the Y stands for. I... I don't want to hear about you stripping boys in the YWF again, Vinny. Just listen to me here. It would be a disgrace to break the lineage of this title. You must return for one more match, even if it's just to drop the belt to Apostle Paul since you kicked him in the face as hard as you could the other uh, during that one training session. And I should note, by the way, that we can now, and I don't know what he did, but we can add Paul to the list of men who I have super kicked right in the jaw. He is one of three. That's actually remarkable. It is you? Because you would think with a giant beard, you'd have a huge buffer zone there. You'd get close, and it wouldn't matter. So did I. That's right. I was aiming for the beard. Maybe he leaned into it. But you, Mr. Sexy, and the Apostle Paul are the only men ever been kicked right in the face. So he must have done something. I, I, I presume it had to do with him not shaving and sweating all over. But anyway, the other reason you need to return, Vinny, is because I have found your entrance music. <laughs> from parts unknown weighing in at 420 pounds accompanied by a bag of Oreos <laughs> accompanied by pork lard Vinny V you know I actually heard a commercial the other night for a nightclub that was having the music played by DJ Vinny V really? you know the name of the song is? Vinny V Blues. Pimp My Elephant. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Pimp My Elephant. Oh, it's getting faster now. What's happening? Uh-oh. Yeah, we don't need to hear any of this. Absolute fucking bullshit. All right, let's move on now. SmackDown. It was the continuation of the SmackDown Sprint. Fit Finley and Matt Hardy had the first match. And they actually did a great tease. Oh. I'm pretty, ah, motherfucker. They actually did a great tease at the one minute and seven second mark when the midget distracted the ref. Finley hit Matt in the leg with a shillelagh. But Matt kicked out. Place went nuts for that one. That was good. So anyway, Fit went to work on his leg, tried to tap him out with the Indian death lock, but the time limit expired. And then afterwards, Joey Mercury hit the ring in a face mask, beat the hell out of Matt until the referees broke it up as he was trying to break his face with a chair. And he has vowed <clears throat> to disfigure Matt Hardy. He said, uh, I won't quit until the Hardys look worse than I do, or something. What? That's what he said in the promo. Boy, what delivery you've got. That's why I'm here and he's there. Where's your theme song again here? No, that's not Cut necessary. that promo while this is playing. Go ahead. Wait. He vowed that he would not quit until the Hardys face. No, say I. I. I will not... <laughs> I can't do it. I will not quit until the Hardy's face looks worse than mine. <laughs> Humbled. Oh, that made me laugh. I, yes, it did. That's an all-time great moment right there, if I do say so myself. 
Marquis von Kor or Kor von. <laughs> or, <laughs> well, that'll stick forever now. <laughs> Marquis von Kor. <laughs> he's a count. Well, he is. I love the fact that he's. His, they're, they're pronouncing it Marcus. Yeah, it's spelled. And, and they point that out. You no, know, what I think what happened was was his name is Marquis von Kor. It's his new name. <laughs> now that I think about it, it'd be a great name for a. Uh, he'd be a better vampire than the vampire. Yeah, uh, actually. I think Marquis von Kor came out with that name, and uh, Joey Styles just said Marcus. And so someone from the headset went, well, just say he's Marcus, but uh, it's spelled Marquis. Because this had to be live. This show had to be live. It was. It definitely was live. Okay, there's no way I could watch this show and go, this was a taped program. Impossible. It, it would have just aired a replay. So it had to have been, I, I think this had to have been a fuck up, because why don't you spell it Marcus? I don't know. It, don't, don't, don't ask that. This, this was too stupid. This was too weird. The whole the whole thing with Monty Brown, this is Monty Brown, by the way, for those of you not paying attention, with a new and less impressive physique. He is now Marquis Von Kor or whatever, and he is a, I guess he's still a football player. He's still from the uh, animal kingdom. He's from the animal kingdom instead of the Serengeti. He's still the alpha male. Mm-hmm. He is Monty Brown, except they don't let him use the actual name that he used when he was a legit sports star. Yes. I don't understand. Well, I don't. Um, I, I, I get the theory behind it in that we are ta- we, we want we don't want anyone to leave our company and use that name, even if it is their real name. It's stupid, but I, I understand that. They want to own everything. Well, they sure did a hell of a job with John Cena. Well, they just recently decided this. Yeah, it is in fact stupid. It, it, it blows out uh, it, his his legit sports background is pretty much useless now. Sting was in the ring calling out Abyss. He demanded he reveal the secret to the whole earth, or uh, you know, there was no or. Just do it. Yeah, do it. And when he didn't, when he uh, did a lot of his usual yelling and screaming and that sort of thing, um, ended up with Sting going well. It's public domain. I'll just go uh, find out myself. It's public record. I will go do the research. Which, the very first segment of the show, or as soon as we got to the prison, I turned to you and said, "Does he know Abyss's real name? Can he just look this up?" Well, Is they this don't. The world's they worst. They only know Chris. <laughs> and I don't think he went. Into no prison. one in the TNA office has a. Uh... Any record of what Chris's last name is? They're probably being nice and not revealing this fucking information for this madman. All I'm saying is that Sting is the worst detective ever. Well, yeah. Okay. We need the fast Johnnies or whatever we're on the The keen Eddies. (laughs) Keen Eddies. They need to investigate this one. Find out what Abyss did. And don't read the spoilers. I was going to say, that's cheating. (laughs) It's cheating. Following clues and, and getting the answers is cheating. Uh, that was awesome. I got an email today from our buddy Mark. Mark, who is now in New Jersey. Is he a fan of Mexico? It has nothing to do with Mexico. It has to do with ruling. <laughs> I see. I'm going to read this for everybody. We have a lot of big fans of Mark. He hasn't been on the show since Christmas. I, I can't imagine how anyone would not be a fan of Mark. Called him in a drunken stupor and started burying people that he worked on in film, which uh, he tried to ixnay. But the email reads as follows. So I saw a commercial for this new wrestling show that's premiering on MTV soon, and I thought I saw New Jack. So I went to the website, and sure enough, it was New Jack. What's the deal with this shit? Is it really going to be tough as nails, old school ECW style, or is it just going to be the same old crap? I mean, it has Mark Walton and Vampiro on it, so I'm not expecting much. Also, it has Just Incredible, and he's called Just Incredible. Did the WWE give him back the rights to his name, or did they sell said rights to MTV? Let me know. I'm going to watch Raw tonight, and I'm sure I'll want to kill myself. Mark. Yeah. We have not watched Ring of Honor yet, so well, we will, not all of it. We will review that one tomorrow. I'm actually going to write this down right now. That's actually that makes sense. And uh, as we have not yet watched WSX, let's watch let's review that tomorrow as well. All right, we well, you know, Ichiban reviewed WSX and he hadn't watched it. 
We actually had a... God bless Ichiban. Ichi... I don't want to steal his gimmick. If I didn't love you, Ichiban, I would ban you. <laughs> and perhaps kill you. He lied to you. Ichiban sent me a WSX report. And because I'm a big fan of Ichiban's absurdities, the biggest absurdity being Ichiban himself... <laughs> I thought, hey, it'd be pretty, it'd be pretty neat to put up Ichiban's review. He'll be, he'll be the first ever WSX review by Ichiban. An F4W.com exclusive, Ichiban's WSX review. And I read it, and it was shockingly lucid. There was only one line that made no sense at all. And so I put it up. And then I put it up, and I got to thinking, and I was like, wait a second, I know what the main event of tonight's show is. It's a exploding cage match. And his review does not have an exploding cage match in it. And he also gave a match one and a third star. Something doesn't jive here. And it turns out he'd sent me a fraudulent report. He worked you. Unacceptable. Ichiban, you are grounded. <laughs> you are on timeout. You are in, I'm not going to put him in timeout. Yet. Oh, that, 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 He's not, just grounded. It's not that severe. No. He, he will not be allowed to, to post anything on the front page for a period of two months. Oh. Yes, I'm putting my foot down. All right, let's go over the Royal Rumble pools here for everybody. We've got two sets of them. Royal Rumble Drawings, it's called. What we're going to do is we're going to read off 30 names, and then we're going to read off another 30 names. We've got two pools of people in this Royal Rumble pool. Everybody's going to get a number, and then, of course, during the Royal Rumble, when your number comes up, you can root for the wrestler that gets your number, and if he wins... You I, win. You win. I don't know what you win. I, I believe somebody had planned on sending prizes to the winners, not me. Not us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how this whole thing works. We'll see what happens. But this is the annual Royal Rumble pool. So let me load up some uh, wacky, victorious music here while we get prepared for this. That's right. Excellent. Now, the way it worked was this was done on our wonderful board. And we actually had so many people this year that we were in the middle of a third pool. God. Yeah. Unfortunately, the third pool has been axed. Oops. They did not get 30 people. I see. So, too late. We're sorry. Life goes on. Maybe next year. That's the spirit. But here we go, kids. This is the first Royal Rumble pool. So listen very carefully for your number and your name. And I would ask that somebody listening to this please write this all down because I ain't We're not do going it. to. Please write it down and post it on the board so we can have a uh, reminder for Sunday. We'll go slow. That's right. Oops. Let me start this over again. All right, here we go. Number one. Triple H Game WMX7. Triple H Game WMX7. Could you have a more complicated name for the Royal Rumble pool? We'll find out. Number two, Tile Breaker. A much simpler name. Sure. Tile Breaker, number two. Number three, and this one is intriguing since he has left the Empire. Oh. He has jumped to TNA. The Rochester. <laughs> The Rochester. So number if, three in absentia. If number three wins, I'll just give the Rochester another month on this site. I don't know what he'll do with it since he ate so much, but he can come back. Number four, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Dan is the fourth entrant into the Royal Rumble Pool A. That's right. Number five, Atari Khan. Atari Khan, number five. Number six, William. With uh, two M's, I believe, William? Nope, just William. Oh, just William. My bad. I apologize for screwing up your name, William, but you are number six. That's right. Number seven, Jackson Five. <laughs> now, that seems like cheating to have five men. It's... It does. It seems like he's got five spots. But... Let's, just, let's just make it Tito Jackson. Sure. All right. Seven, Jackson Five. Number eight, 
Amo version one. Amo version one. The eighth entrant into the Royal Rumble Pool A. That's right. Number nine, Cleavy. <laughs> Always a fantastic poster on our board. Cleavy. Cleavy. <laughs> Number nine. I don't know who or Nuevo. what Cleavy is. Would you shut the fuck up while I give this speech? I don't know who or what Cleavy is, but I fully endorse this person. Number ten, Hardcore Hogan. Hardcore Hogan. Always much beloved. Always a favorite in a Royal Rumble, Hardcore Hogan. Indeed, he's Hogan and he's Hardcore and he's number ten. Number eleven, the man who writes the WSX and TNA reports on our website. No, it is not Ichiban. Damn it. L.T. Kasanka. L.T. <laughs> Zonka. <laughs> Kasanka. That's how it's pronounced here in the Empire. Fine. Number 12, Lyndon Walker. Also universally loved. <laughs> I was trying to think of a joke from 1970 for Lyndon Walker, but I couldn't think of one. Well, we love you. Number 13, Red Scare. Red Scare is number 13. Indeed. Is that a communist reference? It may be. Number 14, always a favorite and always trouble. The legendary Nut Bunnies. <laughs> Nut Bunnies. Who is indeed a troublemaker, but he's number 14. Number 15, a man who is new to the board, but has caused... I don't even know if I can say that. He's made his mark on the board. That I will say. Pikachu. Pikachu. <laughs> number 15, we're halfway home. Pikachu is number 15 in the first set of the Royal Rumble entrance. Number 16. This is so exciting. RVD331. RVD331, who I'm not familiar with. I'm hoping that RVD331 doesn't get the real RVD, or you ain't winning this pool there, buddy. That would be bad luck. Number 17, Cell High 22. Cell... I like that name. Cell High 22, you're number 17. I like the idea that Cell High went on Hotmail or something and tried to become just Cell High, but 21 guys had beaten him to it. Yes. Number 18, he is world famous, and he is currently grounded. Ichiban. Well, there's your winner. i got to put my money on Ichiban. Ichiban is number, number 18, 18 yes. in the Royal Rumble pool, first set. I think he's the favorite. Number 19, Jeff, 28. Again. Although, frankly... I'm surprised there were only there's, 27 previous there, I'm Jeffs. stunned there were 20, 21 sell highs, but there was only 27 Jeffs. He must have gotten in early on the thing. He must have got his Hotmail account in 1994. There you go. Number 20. The Crazy Man. <laughs> That's the name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Crazy Man is number 20. Number 21. PCN Thomas. PCN Thomas is number 21, and we are almost done. PCN Thomas, a 21st entrant in the first pool. We still have one more to go, everybody. Pool A. Don't change that dial. I have an idea. Rather than having it be Pool A and Pool B, this should be Pool Brian. The next one should be Pool Vinny. There's going to be a winner at each. Okay, fine. Which means the idea of a pool with your name on it is absurd. God damn it. Number 22. Quick. As in K-Quick. Really? Well, just quick. Okay. It may be Ron Killings. I'm not sure. Whoever you are, young man, you're number 22. Number 23, guaranteed to have a fantastic entrance into the Royal Rumble, the Shockmaster. <laughs> yeah. And again, I hope this is really Fred Ottman. It may be. The Shockmaster, number 23. Number 24. Not Minnesota Fats, everybody. Minnesota Fats 2. And I say again, this seems like cheating to have multiple entrants under one number, but hey, Minnesota Fats 2, you're the 24th no, it's guy. it's not multiple entrants, because there is no Minnesota Fats in this. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's, it's not two Minnesota Fats, it's like Mr. Wrestling 2. Minnesota Fats has recently turned heel on the board. That's fine, I will not hold that against <laughs> not you. Not the first, not the last. But hopefully a number of men will gang up on Minnesota Fats 2 and eliminate him from said rumble. Similar to Earthquake or Viscera. Number 25, I have never heard of this man. I did not know that he was on the board. Making his debut. I guess making his debut. Dr. Sidney M. Basil. I don't know that name from. Oh, I'm going to forget this reference. Well, anyway, Doc, you're number 25. <laughs> Doc Sidney. Doc Basil. Doc M. Basil. Number 26. A favorite, I suspect, here in this Royal Rumble. At number 26, 
Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. Again, universally beloved. Dallas Cowboys. Not, a, not an enemy in the world. No, not one. Not anymore, at least. <laughs> Number 27, Omega, in all caps. 27, all caps, Omega. That's right. Number 28, a popular favorite on the board, Reed. <laughs> Universally beloved. Young Reed, <laughs> master of all things red. Yes, master of reading comprehension. <laughs> We're just kidding with you, Reed. Read you're, on, young Reed, read on. Read on, young man, you're 28. Number 29, and why is his name Reed? Why are you asking me? I don't know. Reed, I, don't, I need to know why your name is Reed. Seriously. I, I always read it as red, as in he's read something. I see. It's past tense. Something. Number 29, the celluloid hero. A football fan like myself, so he's my new favorite. Well, oh, because he discusses football with you? He sends me football tapes. I see. Yes, that is number 29, Celluloid Hero. And finally, the number 30 slot. Yokozuna. I wanted the fanfare there. Oh. Ketsanos. Ketsanos, you're number 30. The number 30 slot. That is the Why the draw for Yokozanos? The first set of Royal Rumble entrance right there. Number 1 through 30. Thank you, men, for participating. We are now going to move to list number 2. But first, I'm going to save my uh, newsletter thing here so we don't have an issue. Yeah, I was going to say good luck to everyone, but a lot of you already got shitty luck. Yeah. So, how about it? Royal Rumble draws number 2. By the way, I want to thank the AmeriCool for actually setting these up. Oh, excellent, yes. I thought perhaps you had drawn these from a hat or something. Fucking kidding me? All right, here we go. Royal Rumble set number two. Number one, Maven Effect. <laughs> Maven Effect. <laughs> really? Could there be a more fitting number one entrant than our own Maven Effect? I never thought about it till just now, but there's the one Maven fan. <laughs> and again, that may be Maven Huffman. It may. It, that's the only Maven fan I can think of. So, <laughs> number two. H space J space H. There are inexplicably spaces between these three initials. Not periods, just spaces. Blank spaces. Regardless, H space J space H, you're number two. Number two in the second Royal Rumble. Number tour. two won the Royal Rumble last year. Well, you're fucked this year then, buddy. <laughs> number three, Nate Diggity. Nate Diggity, number three. Diggity. Nate Diggity. Number four, simply a name. Fry, as in Don Fry. Oh, a fine man, Don Fry. Number four. Mm -hmm. Number five, Chris Bickley. Chris Bickley, you are the fifth entered in the second Royal Rumble pool. Chris Bickley is a veteran. He has been around for some time. Is he a wily veteran? Perhaps it's his time to win the Royal Rumble pool number two. And perhaps not. <laughs> number Probably not. six. Anchor. Anchor. <laughs> He's been accused of being a front for a wrestling personality. I don't believe it. He has been. I think it's the guy who holds boats in place. I thought Anchor would be doing commentary for this match, personally, but apparently he's actually in the Battle Royal. You never know. You never know. Number seven. Mab 311. Again, I'm not familiar with Mab 311. I have not heard of Mab 311 either. But apparently Perhaps. there were 310 Mabs before him. Perhaps a newcomer. Mab 311. If there were 311 Mabs before him, he obviously got his account in 2007. Potentially. Today. Perhaps just to sign up for this, yes. Number eight, Roxas. R-O-X-A-S. Who are these people? I don't know. We've got a lot of newcomers here. Roxas, though, is number eight. Number nine. A long time subscriber to the Empire. A man from another land. A man who had an all-time great gimmick until he began speaking English and broke kayfabe. The Hungarian Hitman. Much like when the spoiler removed his mask and was not nearly as effective. Hungarian Hitman began to speak English. I will never forget when I used to go on the <laughs> chats and the Hungarian Hitman would be there. And he would just randomly type something in Hungarian. <laughs> Ah, oh, the good old days. Number 10, Torty. 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 New and very active member. Perhaps. Perhaps he's a number of tortoises. Torti. 
<laughs> a, a pod of tortoises? Sure. Is that what it is, a pod? I just made that up, possibly. It's not. How do you know? Because you just made it up. What is it, then? Torti. What do you call a group of torti? A flock? Torti? There's a name. I guarantee you there's a name. A flock, a gaggle, a, a gang. A number of torti. A number. Number 11. MJ Styles. <laughs> MJ Styles, big AJ fan. He is a big AJ Styles fan. We couldn't we couldn't spring for AJ, so we got MJ. But we like MJ. Number twelve, Prez. George W. Bush, or a fan of Pez. Perhaps Prez, not Pez, you jackass. Oh, Pez was taken, maybe. Oh, so he just added an R. Sure, why not? Why not P E Z Z? <laughs> that would be a better idea, wouldn't it? Number thirteen, I M M. Universally beloved. <laughs> IMM. Number 13. Lucky 13. Lucky 13. IMM. We'll see if his luck runs out at the Royal Rumble. Number 14. Lap D1. I always read that as LAPD1. That's probably actually what it is. <laughs> LAPD1. Maybe an actual officer. Which actually surprised me that he was the first LAPD. Yeah. And actually, the first would have probably just been LAPD. He was forced to get LAPD 1. Still, that's a much better showing than MAB 311. And speaking of the LAPD, number 15, Carlos, the dwarf. What does that have to do with the LAPD? You know he's had a run-in with the LAPD. Are you playing Carlos the dwarf? Are you playing he's a hoodlum? Perhaps. Perhaps I am. Or perhaps he's an innocent man framed by an over-aggressive police force. What he is is number 15. There you go. That we know. Number 16, another long time. Reader of the Figure Four Weekly, Foy Wonder. Foy Wonder. Fine man. Fine man. He and I have a common love of horrible, wretched, awful films. That's right. That's right. Number 17, Matt Pat. Matt Pat. Yeah, I thought he, it was Matt Pat 11, wasn't it? It used to be. I think he dropped it at some point. He dropped the 11. Maybe he killed 1 through 10. Unacceptable. Regardless, he's a Yankees fan. Number 18, a know. favorite of Vinny for a number of reasons. Uncle Teabag. What are you implying? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You're 18, Uncle Teabag. What? You're 18, Uncle Teabag. Just repeating that. Are you propositioning Uncle Teabag? Did you say he was number 18? Oh, I thought you were talking about his age. No! <laughs> Jesus! You, you perv! You're the one that was like, you're 18, Uncle Teabag. What am I supposed to think? Well, you did just read that he was 18. I wasn't paying attention to that. I was paying attention to the tea bag part of his name. I bet you were. Uncle Tea Bag. It's even worse. <laughs> that is, that's the worst name ever. <laughs> Number 19. Uncle. H-T-F-C-A-C-C 2005. Whatever the hell that means, number 19. I think it means Hall of Fame Cauliflower Alley Club 2005. Something like that. I made that up. That's what, that's what I was thinking about when I see it, though. He's only 19. Much like Kelly Kelly. Perhaps At least he, until last week. Perhaps he is also an exhibitionist. She is now 20, as is Scotty Sal's. Hey, good segue. <laughs> Scotty you're, Sal- you're good at this radio thing. I am. Scotty Sal's, number 20. Number 21, another fine man, longtime subscriber, Paul Jacoby. Paul Jacoby. Paul Jacoby, number 21. He has a... a uh, doesn't he have the, um, the avatar with the two girls kissing? That'd be a fine avatar. Or maybe that's... Uh, um, you thinking of Paul Miller? I think I'm thinking of Paul... No, it's not Paul Miller. Shit, now i got to find out. Oh, come on. Whoever has the two girls kissing, fine avatar. <laughs> Thumbs up. Number 22, the man who created these lists. And a fine number, number 22. Uh, number 22, I believe, has a good chance of winning this year. Yes. The AmeriCool. AmeriCool. I like your odds, my friend. I like your odds. And he did create these lists, coincidentally. He must have known lucky number 22. Number 22, is he an introvert? Is he an extrovert? He is Rovert. Wait, I thought America was 22. 23 is Rovert. 23 is Rovert, okay. Dumb shit. Number 23, Rovert. There you go. I don't know what that means. I, mm. But you're 23. Good luck. Number 24, the Altoona Muppet. Are there Muppets from around the world? <laughs> I used to think Muppet when I saw your old hairdo. 
That's totally fair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what Altoona Muffet looks like, but uh, good luck on Sunday. Number 25, another longtime subscriber, Hoto. Hoto, number 25, and there are only five men left in the second pool. And that's right. These are the men. These, these are the favorites when you look at it. These are the favorites. Number 25, Hoto. Number 26, Dick Trickle. <laughs> Dick Trickle, who I sincerely do hope is the Dick Trickle from NASCAR. That would be awesome. It may be. It may be. And or perhaps his penis leaks. I'm not sure. That, it could be just a, a, a medical condition. Could be. Number 27, Mitty. I have nothing to say about Mitty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I, no, that's not, that's not a hidden message. Oh. I literally have nothing to say. I thought perhaps Mitty had called you fat, gay, and ugly, and thus you didn't want to say anything about him. <laughs> no, Brian, that was you. I know you're not done, because number 28 is C.M. Hump. <laughs> Who has, in fact, called me fat, gay, and ugly. He has, in fact. But I'm a forgiving man. I've got a lot of kindness in my heart. So, hey, C.M. Hump, you got a, you've got you drawn a great number. He I may be he... fat, gay, and ugly as well, so, you know, I, I can't all's prove... fair in love and war. I can't prove he's not. I just don't care if he is. So, hey, good luck. It has been proven that he is, in fact, fat. Oh, that's right. He's the guy who said he was... He, he said he was fat. I think he lied, though. I possible. think he lied. There, a photo appeared on the website that is allegedly of CM Hump, and you're fatter. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> or at least he's not 300 pounds. Everyone erase that photo. I believe he claimed he was 300 pounds. That is a lie. Perhaps he's 6 foot 10. Could be. Could be. CM Hump, number 28. Number 29, Rohiblius. Rohiblius? No, I don't see him as often as I used to. Well, he's back. Perhaps I'm just in the wrong form. It could be me missing him, but he's number 29. He is number 29, and number 30. The best number. The final man in the 2006 Royal Rumble set two drawing here at F4WOnline.com. Neville. Neville. Aaron Neville, maybe. Perhaps it is Aaron Neville. Or one of his brothers. Perhaps it is. Aaron but Neville, you are number 30 in the Royal Rumble pool. We want to wish you all luck. I want to thank you all for participating in the Royal Rumble pool here at F4WOnline.com. We will have lists up on the board with everybody's name and where they are at. I just realized I could actually post this list if I were not so lazy. So, uh, but we, you are. But I am. I am indeed. So, so fuck it. Thank you, everybody, again, for participating. <laughs> we also have to do another Royal Rumble pool. The jackasses in pool number three finally got their act together after I'd locked them out and uh, got the third pool in. So we've got one more Royal Rumble pool to read today. It has been randomized. And we are ready to go. Let's fire up our Royal Rumble Pool music. There we go. Formerly used for some other inferior competition, but now it's been elevated. Very much inferior. All right. Let me make sure I've got it. Now let's get a little louder. That's a little quiet. That, that's we good. Go. There we go. <laughs> that's too loud. There we go. Fine. Let's turn over. All right, here we go, kids. The third and final Royal Rumble poll, number one in the F4WOnline.com Royal Rumble pool. All hail King Vinny. Well, there you go. There's your winner. All hail King, v King Vinny, like Shawn Michaels, like Chris Benoit, will draw number one and go on to win the whole damn thing. I think you're wrong. <laughs> number two, a fine individual. Mr. Canada. Mr. Canada. Mr. Canada got number two. Like Rey Mysterio and Vincent Man, he will go on to win the whole thing. I don't know about that one. <laughs> but, Mr. Canada, you've got a chance. You just better hope that the winner is not planned to be The Undertaker. Or you are, in fact, fucked. You don't think The Undertaker is going to draw number two and win? No. Number three, Bruce Wayne 75. Bruce Wayne 75. Has a number three guy ever won the Rumble? Maybe he'll be the first. Ric Flair. Oh, 90, you're right. You're right. You are right. Ric Flair was number 92, three. 92, thank you. God damn, I'm that was a great match. A wrestling trivia machine. That was the best rumble of all time. Oh, God, yes. I think just because everybody loved Ric Flair. I'll bet going back, it probably would not have been as well booked as some of them in, like, 99 and 2000 and 2001. I'm pretty sure it's on his DVD, so I'll, I'll watch it in the coming weeks, and we'll find out. WrestleFan81, you are number four. Number five, Zoe731. Uh, all these numbers. 
There are a lot of numbers. Uh, were there 730 Zoe's before you? What's funny is is the thing on the internet is people get a handle and it's like it's like their name, it's like their birth name. They use it everywhere. Yeah. They use it on their website. They use it for their email. They use it on the random boards. They go elsewhere on the internet. That's who they are. I don't get it. <laughs> I always just used Brian Alvarez, but uh, apparently I'm in the minority. Number six, Leo Convoy. Leo Convoy, another great name. Leo, number six. Number six. And even anybody below number twenty is gonna have a tough time. But Leo Convoy at number six, you never know. It does come down to the luck of the draw, but anything can happen. Number seven. I've never heard of this man, but perhaps he's related to another poster. Smackflea. Smackflea's been around. Smarkflea. Oh. Oh, you're right. You dipshit. Who the hell smack flea? They forgot the R in this. Oh. Vinny, you're a goober. I would play the drop, but I don't want to ruin our Olympic music here. Smart flea, you are number seven. Smack flea. I was right about Matt Pat 11, by the way. You're wrong. Shit. I don't even remember the argument. You didn't think there was 11. You thought he dropped the 11. No. Oh. But you're a dipshit. You I see? was wrong. You were wrong. God, whatever will I do? You've been wrong so many times, it doesn't affect you. <laughs> I'm known to it. I've got I'm, I'm an immunity to incorrectness. Number eight, CD2KY. A fine example of a number. I'm trying to think of what that could mean. I, I picture well, compact discs and KY jelly and how they might link together with the number two. And there's two of them. <laughs> no, CD2KY. Oh, I see. Maybe the hole in the CD and a little bit of KY. Never thought of that one, did you? As a matter of fact, I never did. But you with your cake size, anyway. My cake size testicle? Oh, right, yeah. Number nine, Denzil. Let's move on. Denzil, you're number nine. And we have 21 names to go in this, the third Royal I'll, Rumble Pool. I'll never be able to look at CD2KY again. <laughs> I'll always be thinking of that little hole in the CD. Denzil, you're number you will. Denzil, you're number nine. Number 10, everybody loves his name for some reason. I don't know why. It's a great name, don't get me wrong, but I don't see the, the hilarious comedy in it. A Bear, 729. <laughs> it's, it, it's marginally funny. It you, is, there's... you just laugh like a moron, and, and you laugh when I... it first came on the board. Did I? Yes. You're like, are you really A Bear? <laughs> well, bears are funny. Yeah. Especially when there's he's A Bear and there's 729 of him. Ha, ha, ha. A-Bear729, you're number 10, and apparently have a funny name. Number 11. I don't even want to read this man's name, but I will. He is an enemy of the Empire. Ree Dunbeck. <laughs> Universally loved is Ree Dunbeck. <laughs> Universally hated. <laughs> trying to take over the Empire, trying to overthrow me. Can you imagine this show run by Reed Dunbeck? Matter of fact, no. I can't either. It would suck. The Reed Dunbeck and Vinny show doesn't roll off the tongue. No. The Vinny and Reed Dunbeck show? No. Recipe for disaster. Vinny V and Reed Dunbeck? Reed and Vinny V. V and Reed. The V and Reed show. Number 12. Apollo Creed Mark. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> Apollo Creed Mark. Now that's old school. He may have Apollo Creed is old school. Really? Rocky didn't just come out? Why are you always make fun of me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it just came out, dude. He's not in it. It's still Rocky. Apollo, dude, Apollo Creed's dead. <laughs> Apollo Creed, Mark, not old school. New school. Oh, fuck you. Number now you're just being a dick for the sake of being a dick. Don't turn me down. Number 13. I didn't want to ruin the festivities here by having Vince use profanities here on the air. Number 13, Paul Miller. Paul. Paul. I expect, I actually expected under Paul Miller to just see Paul. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's habit. Sure, it's habit to still sign your first name even though your first name is, you know, even though on your post. Right, and, and and over on the side there, yeah. We know who you are, Paul. That's right. Paul Miller. If it said, if your name was Paul Miller and it said Ben at the bottom, then I'd be interested. Then Ooh. it would be confusing. Like, well, it'd be confusing. what's Ben using Paul Miller's deal here for? Paul Miller's been hijacked. What happened to Paul Miller? Number 14, Nomco. Who I probably pronounced uh, uh, incorrectly, but I apologize. You're still number 14, though. Nomco, you're 14. I don't know what that means. 
Except that you're... We're pretty middle of the road. Underneath Repo Man, who is number 15. Who may have actually been number 15 in some Royal Rumble past. Repo Man has been subscribing since, I believe, issue 137. Holy crap. We are currently at number 606, I believe. That's like hundreds. Repo Man, I hope you win there, brother. Number 16, uh... I didn't know what to say about this man. Except he's a... He's a... He's got great pants. <laughs> Jimmy Lasers. Jimmy Lasers, number 16. Jimmy Lasers is great just because he's Jimmy Lasers. Well, that, that that that's a much better reason than his pants. I Does he have pants in his signature or something? Dude, I have six and avatars turned off. When have I seen Jimmy Lasers' pants? I'm just going to move on. Fine. Sometimes you say things, Vince, and I just hear everybody on the entire board just sighing in frustration at your idiocy. That may well be one of them. That is one of them. His fucking Zubaz U.S. United States flag pants, you jackass. Turn your fucking cigs and, and thingamajiggers on. I like you slammed the table in anger. Number 17, my kill. Fitting, since I may kill Vince. You may kill me right now. You are number 17, my kill. Number 18, Eric 864. Well, that, now there's one where I can easily imagine there being 863 prior Eric's. There could be. But... 18, you said? Yes, he's 18. He's 18. Oh, Vinny. I'm trying to pay attention now. There's another guy that's 18 for you. I know yesterday we had a big to-do about this. Did you get the guy's number? Did he PM you? Let's just move on. Number 19. Con of Chicago. I don't know what that <laughs> means. Is there a G missing? Perhaps you are Kong of Chicago? I don't know. You are number 19. You are number 19. Whatever, whatever your name means, you're number 19. Number 20, Kid Leeds. I suspect someone from the UK. Perhaps even from Leeds. Perhaps from Leeds. And perhaps a kid. Kid Leeds, you're number 20. Number 21, Ligaki. I've never heard of Ligaki. <laughs> L-I-G-O-C-K-I? Nah, perhaps a newcomer on the board. You need to post more Ligaki so we know who you are. But you are number 21. Pretty good number. Number 22, Hemi, and I presume not Christy. No, in fact, he made it abundantly clear at one point. Really? How did he do that? He said, I'm not Christy Hemi. Okay. You're not Christy Hemi, but you're number 22. Right. Number 23, M. Rob Fisher. Again, who is M. Rob Fisher? <laughs> we have a lot of lurkers on the board, is what we've learned in the past what few days. What does that mean, M. Rob Fisher? Well, perhaps there's another Rob Fisher. And he wanted to identify himself by his first initial. M. Rob Fisher. Huh. Maybe huh. his first name is like Manfred. And he didn't want to go by Manfred Fisher. Maybe it's Marquis. The Marquis Von Fisher. Number 24, Booker T. Fan. Well, that is pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? <laughs> he is a fan of Booker He's T. He's a fan. He's a fan of, of Booker T., yes. Booker T. Fan, I believe, created and randomized this list and is number 24, coincidentally. Hmm. Randomized. You can, all, you can almost see, and I'm thinking, if it's 30, it'll be too obvious. I better move myself down. It's funny that everybody that randomizes this randomly gets between 21 and 24. <laughs> don't know how that happens, but Crazy Booker world. T. Fan, we know you were just, we know this was all random. We trust you. Number 25, Ugly Bob. That's unfortunate. That sucks, dude. Sorry, Ugly Bob, but hey, you got a good number. Couldn't you just... It's on the internet. Can't you just call yourself Handsome Bob? 18M or something? <laughs> <laughs> Ugly Bob. <laughs> Ugly Bob is number 25. <laughs> number 26, Acid Helm Nun. Acid Helm Nun. N-U-N. Our, our, I always say it N-U-N. I didn't like the old nun thing. I always say it Acid Helm Nun. Our, I've our, met him. He's no nun. Well, there's that. Acid Helm Nun. He's not acid either. What do you mean he's not acid? There's acid in his name. But you call it you call him acid? Yeah, but the nun is capitalized, like that's important. <laughs> oh. He's not a helm either. No! <laughs> he's no nun. Acid what? helm N U N. Number twenty seven, the Dooleys. The duelist. No, oh he spelled it wrong then. <laughs> the Dooleys. <laughs> <laughs> Your next great English tag team, the Dooleys. <laughs> The Dooleys, it says. D-U-E-L-I-E-S. <laughs> the Dooleys, you are number 27. Both of you. Number 28, Johnny Mud. <laughs> Doesn't he have like a blue fish in his... Uh... He's the one who always signs his name that has a different attribute every time. <laughs> That's right. It's always great. He's always got a different little quote. He's always got something going on. 
Then we've got number 29 I've never heard of, Vanilla Fire 1000. I have no idea what that name means, but I love it. <laughs> Vanilla Fire 1000. Vanilla Fire 1000, perhaps you're a robot, but you're number 29. Or I, I see it's like some kind of recipe, and it's the 1,000th version of it. All right. And the big number 30, Big Saxy. <laughs> big Saxy is Big 30, the final entrant. In Pool C, the Admin Tony Pool. I don't know what that means. I don't know why everybody has a pool, since there's going to be a winner in each pool. What are we, all three, the winners, when someone in our pool wins? What does that mean? Yes. That's retarded. (laughs) And it was your idea. Bullshit. This is TCS interviewing, pardon me. Belched a little bit. That was not a belch. The great Kali. I heard you Well, certainly very impressive, Kali. And tonight you make your in-ring Raw debut against the WWE champion, John Cena. What type of impact do you hope to have? (laughs) Yeah, it's always scary when you think you understand, Kali. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understood a little bit of that. I, I, I heard I was on ECW. I abandoned Davari. I really? I, I heard that. Now i got to listen to this again. What else did you hear? He said, I am the best wrestler. I am great Kali. I'm going to hear it one more time. Well, certainly very impressive, Kali, and tonight you make... John Cena, something. John Cena, something. Yeah. John Cena. I have no idea. I ECW. I abandoned Ivari. I don't think that was I, I abandoned Ivari. I abandoned the Red Robin. I abandoned him at Red Robin. He did. I am great. Kali. I'm going to hear Red Robin again. I abandoned, I'm abandoned at the Red Robin. Yep. Not the first part, just the part I can't get. John Cena say. I give up. <laughs> Sorry, Kali, we failed you. Well, we tried. We figured out Red Robin. <laughs> He's abandoned at Red Robin. <laughs> we need to make a song out of that one. <laughs> I got to say something here about the Iron Sheet. I know that the people that, not everybody, but most of the people that bring up this argument are, in fact, trolls. But I'm going to address it anyway. Fine. The Iron Sheik was on the Dr. Keith Lipinski show. The Iron Sheik has been all over the place. And every now and then we get people saying, all this stuff with the Sheik, it's it's exploiting a man who has issues. This is what i got to say about that. Number one... Sheik has had some issues. Sheik did go down with alcohol poisoning a couple of weeks ago. He has had some major drinking problems. He's had some other issues, obviously. But the reality is, alcohol or not, Sheiky does, in fact, have high spots. High spots. If you interview the Iron Sheik, he's going to talk about putting someone in the camel clutch, breaking their back, and fucking their ass. He's going to run down B. Brian Blair. He's going to call somebody a faggot. 
He's going to say something horrible about Hulk Hogan, how he's a no-good son of a bitch. He's going to talk about how he's an AAU champion. He's going to rattle off names, God, Jesus, and Vince McMahon. He's going to do all of this until the day he dies. And he's going to do it whether he's got liquor in him or not. Now, granted, when Sheik's got some liquor in him, he takes it to a whole nother level. But he has these high spots, which sober or uh, drunk he's going to make. The other thing is, Sheik does indeed have problems, but to single out the Iron Sheik as a fucked up guy in this business, you don't get it. That's an excellent point. I could, if I went through the list of guests on our radio show, or the list of guests on any radio show, and looked at the guys that have had personal issues, that have taken drugs, that have perhaps had drug problems, alcohol problems, you're going to find a lot of people. And I always thought it was kind of funny that they're like, boy, Sheik, it's horrible that, that you exploit Sheik like this. Like he's, 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 he a would, victim. Like he's a victim or like if he did not have these issues, he would be a completely normal human being. Sheiky is sheiky. <laughs> there is no exploitation here. And the same goes for many, many people. I was surprised that people found there, there, that there was exploitation of Iron Sheik and not Missy Hyatt. That was a hell of an interview. That was an interview that I had to actually put a disclaimer up for. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to talk about what she talked about, but that was something else right there. So She's I, also had issues. Yes, she has had some issues, but I just wanted to throw all of that out there. And, and seriously, the Iron Sheik ranting about Kramer never gets old. <laughs> I don't consider that exploit, exploitation. I consider that just... Celebration. Celebration. It is a celebration. <laughs> This is from Nut Bunnies. Our good friend Nut Bunnies. If you'll recall, last night on the pay-per-view show, Nut Bunnies sent a very, very angry email, which I'm going to read once more to preface this. Since <laughs> In its entirety. Of you, most of you are listening to this for free. For free and did not perhaps hear the last show. And man, you missed out on a fine show, too. really did. It would help if I could find my goddamn emails here. Sorry, kids. The uh, <clears throat> off-Broadway sort of messed up my whole thing here. You're singing a song in your head, aren't you? I am, actually. It's stuck. All right, this is from uh, Nut Bunnies here. What the fuck was that? I mean, how can they fucking book a feud that good and then just end it in that fucking manner? I've had to watch the goddamn fat fuck squash people for almost a year for it to end with a fucking inside cradle. Oh, and I love the trend of Cena's matches having the same fucking formula continuing, you know? The one where he's beating the shit out of 99% of the match, and then, oh, here comes his five moves of doom, and it's over. Fuck this shit. Nut bunnies. <laughs> I did a hell of a lot better today than I did yesterday. We, we addressed his points last night, so we'll, here's his shout-out now. Here's his shout-out here. Dear Brian, Vince, and friends. We are all friends at the F4W Empire. I have calmed down significantly since my reaction to the finish of the main event, and really, I'm not that pissed anymore. At the time, I was just mad. They sort of wasted a streak ending. But really, now that I think about it, nobody who needs a rub is getting it. So why not have it end in an unspectacular fashion and make Cena look like a bitch at the same time? Also, I think Jamal Umaga, Samoan wrestler, number 87569, who may be a friend of Craig's, has always been very underrated as a worker. It's just that he's never really been able to show it in the U.S. that much because his gimmicks have been beating people up after three minutes. And squashing people. I agree he's underrated, by the way. I like to take this opportunity to say a couple of things. Let's call them the Ten Commandments of Nut Bunnies for the week of January 8th. I have so been waiting for someone to give me ten rules to follow. <laughs> Are you being sarcastic? Just read them. Your life is such that I would not be surprised if that were a true <laughs> statement. First of all, and by the way, if Nut Bunnies thinks he's going to get free shout-outs every week from here on out to read his Ten Commandments, i got news for you, buddy. 
But anyway, let's read these. First of all, if you think TNA is overall good, and right off the fact that they are making no money because you enjoy shit and would let your ass be raped by Russo's writing at any moment, you can just choke on your stupidity in some weird ass case of autoerotic asphyxiation. Second of all, huh. THQ and Ukes can suck my dick. SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 is a broken piece of shit, and there's no way that fucking thing went through QA. You have no idea what he's talking about, do you? No, I just read it. Third of all, change your fucking cable provider, Brian. Comcast has always sucked cock. I don't care if you have to pirate cable. At this point, actually, neither do we. There's a story I could tell about Comcast, but I'm not going to tell it right now. But, Vinny, was it not funny? It, it, it was, as you noted, proof there's a god. It was proof there's a god. And he has a sense god. of humor. Maybe once the deal goes down so I don't jinx it, I'll uh, reveal the story, but I laughed. Fourth... Apple can go to hell. And by the way, about the cable thing, I don't even know if there's another cable provider around here that I could switch to. It would either be Comcast or I'd have to get a dish. And I'd have to check on a dish because the last time I tried to get a dish, they told me you can't get a dish because there's a fucking tree in the way. Yeah. And I said, can I chop the tree down? And they were like, no. So anyway, that pissed me off. Fourth, Apple can go to hell because I know my fucking serial number works, you stupid fucking Indian who happens to conveniently have an American name, because I, <laughs> this just trumped your racist statement from last night, because I just entered it in Apple.com, don't fucking tell me after eight fucking tries is invalid, because I know it is, you cocksucker. This man has a lot of pent-up anger. He has a lot of anger. He is 18. I believe he's 18 now. I was angry at 18. Fifth, that video of the diva botchery is hilarious. Sixth, that video that shows all the Jets draft picks is pretty funny, too. <laughs> yes, it is. Seventh, Monster Heel, Hardcore Hogan, and Ichiban are all really swell guys. Yeah, actually. I, I can largely agree with that. <laughs> I can largely agree with that. <laughs> Hardcore Hogan has his days. I'll say that. I'm a fan of Monster Heel, and Ichiban, I have said many times, untapped genius. Yeah. I'm positive of it. I'm positive. Eighth, please play some Great Kali and Zombie Drops, but not yet. Wait until I'm done. Okay, that was a great, great note right there. That was a great little note right there. Ninth, math is bullshit. What the hell was that? You defied him. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no one can contain the Great Kali. God. He's loose backstage on Raw and loose on this show. No one can... There we go. I had my volume... <laughs> Tenth, I fully endorse Great Kali, ECW champion. Sorry, dude. Sucks to be you. <laughs> now what? Great Kali asked. Yeah. That's how he finished. Professor, Sir Bunnies of Nut, Esquire the Third. Angry man. <laughs> I added that part right there. This is from Scott. This is not wrestling related, but this guy is the greatest. No, he sent me a link. Well, skip that. Also, this was brought to my Links mind. Links don't work in shout outs. This was brought to my mind when you ate cake this week on the Brian and Vinny show. Why were you eating a candy bar on that now famous episode of The Law with Dan Lavransky? Were you in fact banned? And was candy the only thing you were under the influence of that fateful day? <laughs> It'd be great to hear the details on the show for us new subscribers. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> There's not that much to tell. All right, here's the story. I was at Blake Norton's for a TNA pay-per-view party. And this was back during the period where I drank a little more than I do now. And Blake is an Irishman, a drinker, and TNA had been sucking. So we were drinking during TNA pay-per-views. And I was scheduled to be on the law. And Blake's mixing these drinks and mixed a particularly strong one and... I was fucked. Blake doesn't make rum and cokes. He makes rum and rum and rum and rum and cokes. I was off my rocker with drunkenness, and I knew they were going to call, but um, I kept drinking. <laughs> what the hell can you do? When in Rome. Yeah. So they call, and I immediately grabbed a Snickers bar to sober up, because I get something in my stomach, and I sober up pretty fast. So I ended up doing the whole law show, and, and uh, the next day I got an email from Dan Lavransky, who was very disappointed about my uh, performance on the show. I think I'd, I don't know if I'd emailed him first to tell him about the drunkenness or what the deal was, but he was he was unhappy. Mm. And I, I apologized profusely and that sort of thing. And as it turns out, <clears throat> he was most upset 
that I had been eating a candy bar on the air. It wasn't actually the drunkenness. No. Because the infamous law episode has appeared on F4WOnline.com. People have listened to it, and I've been told you can't tell I was drunk. I did a remarkable job of feigning sobriety and talking about wrestling. But apparently it was the eating the candy bar that marked my doom. <laughs> and I have not been on the law since. That was the end. That's your story. Yeah. Hope that was. Uh, hope that lived up to the hype. Yeah, there may be more that I've forgotten. <laughs> no, but, uh, I was there. That's yeah, the gist of it. That's pretty much the gist of the story. If there's anything, it was a minor detail. We were but. watching TNA pay-per-views headlined by Jeff Jarrett versus Monty Brown, and we had to drink. We had to drink, and I drank like a fish. It was a fine episode, I've been told, of, of the law. I just shouldn't have been eaten on the air, I was told. So, what can you do? This is from the Young Phenom. My name is Jeremy. I'm a first-time subscriber to the F4W Empire. I also have a membership to the Observer. I want to know, how did Brian meet Dave? It was a rainy night in Seattle. Actually, let me read the rest of this. <laughs> how he got the F4W started. Thanks. Well, I have a question this week. I actually just gave the story of getting the F4W started. I, we did the YWF, which apparently a video is appeared on YouTube. Of YWF how the hell did that wrestling. happen? Sneedo got a clip of YWF. He did. He got a clip of the Beast versus the Psycho in a ladder match <laughs> with a fuck finish, yes. I might add. Which you were proud of. I was. I was like, no, this has never been done before. <laughs> hey, it was creative at oh, the time. Oh, even for years after, you'd always brag about this. Yeah. He I, invented a finish that no one thought of. I, I'd never seen it. I think somebody eventually did it. I can't remember who or what or where, but I was very proud of that finish back in the day. Back when all of our matches had clean finishes, so one disputed finish actually meant something. Mm -hmm. We were bookers back then. We knew what we were doing. But anyway, the point is I had a newsletter for the local YWF Championship Wrestling, and when that whole thing went under, I sent all... How many people were there? Like 130 people. I said, if you want to keep getting this newsletter, you got to pay. <laughs> it's going to be about WWF, WCW, and ECW or whatever, and it's... $39 for a year or something like that, which, boy, I knew nothing about business then. <laughs> and I think 33 people signed up, which actually is an amazingly high number, Frankly, all things yeah. considered. And it just went from there. And it grew, it grew. We put magazine or articles in magazines or, or ads in magazines. And eventually I tried doing a 900 hotline, which did very well until somebody whose name need not be mentioned but who has appeared on this program, rang up a large bill and decided they weren't going to pay, which meant I had to pay. This is why you don't see a lot of 900 numbers anymore. This is why the business collapsed. Chargebacks. So the hotline went out of business, but Dave had a hotline, and so I sent him a fax. I didn't call Dave Meltzer. I sent him a fax. I said, hi, I'm Brian. I think you've been getting the newsletter. My hotline is folding. I wanted to know if you could use me on your hotline. And he said, sure. And the rest is history. One day he called and said, I'm doing the show on a yada. Would you like to do the first ten minutes with me? I said, sure. After the first show, he amazingly asked me back, which if you've heard any of the yada shows, is a true miracle. <laughs> Worst host ever. Vinny is like Art Bell, Rush Limbaugh, Howard Stern compared to me in my early days at IATA. But I stayed on and still doing IATA today, so that's the wacky story there. You didn't actually meet Dave until you've been working together for like six years. I didn't meet Dave in person until 2001. Yeah. And we started doing the hotline in like 97. We went to King of the Indies, and I met him there. So that's the short version of the story there, kids.